In this video, I want to show you how to set up your machine so you can install the Java JDK, insert it into your path, and then use Visual Studio Code to write Java programs that you can then compile and run. All right, the first thing that we're gonna need, assuming you don't have Visual Studio Code and you don't have Java, is to go out and get the latest version of Java. All right, so we're gonna to go to jdk.java.net and we can see that the latest version of OpenJDK is 14.0.2. We have a zip file right here that we will be able to download. All right, so I have already downloaded that and I have placed it inside of my temporary folder. All right, so here I have OpenJDK already downloaded. It was 189 megs. Now, one thing I'm gonna talk about here is if you open up a brand new tab and you search for download the Java JDK, oops, JDK, you're gonna see a couple different things, but the first couple links take you to Oracle. Um, Oracle, so there are two versions of Java that you can download. The first one is a private one owned by Oracle, and the second one is sort of an open source reference implementation that Oracle, I believe, also maintains. Um, that being said, the licenses are different. So the more permissive license is the JDK from uh, the open source open JDK version. So that's the one that we're gonna use in these examples. I'm not gonna download um, the one from Oracle. So I have open JDK downloaded and I now need to extract it. So I'm gonna choose to extract it and I will choose to extract it on my C drive. And I made a folder called repos Java JDK. And I'm just going to extract it right there. And now by and large, the installation of Java is complete, meaning it's on my hard drive. But just because Java is on my hard drive doesn't mean that I can actually use it. Uh, the reason we can't use it is because the binaries are not in the path of our operating system. So if I uh, hit Windows R and uh, run to open a command window, if I type Java, we can see that Java is not a recognized command. Also, Java C is not a recognized command. All right. Java is the executable you, you will use to launch a Java bytecode program, like a, a .class file. And Java C is the name of the Java compiler. It will take Java source code that you write and compile it into Java bytecode that can then be run via the Java command. All right, and after this video is over, we're gonna set it up so you can run it within Visual Studio Code, which is a nice IDE, okay? So what we need to do is make Java appear in our path. Well, we've just downloaded the JDK, and if we open up and look, there is actually an executable right there in the bin folder. There's a java.exe, and just below that is javac.exe. That is the compiler in the, the, uh, the Java executable that we want to install. So in order to make this go in our path, what I'm going to do is take this directory, and I've copied it to my clipboard, and I'm going to open up the environmental variables on my system, right? So I can just hit the Windows key, start typing environmental variables, and this will take me to the control panel, okay? Another way of doing that is if you go to the control panel, you can go to system, and then you can go to advanced system settings, and it'll take you right to here, all right? So it's easier to access just by hitting the Windows key and typing environmental variables. Now, when I open up the environment, this comes up. We can observe that one of the variable names for the system, right here, here we have user variables, which has a path, but we also have system variables. We are gonna focus on the system variable because the system variables are system-wide, right? They're a global setting. This path variable is where we want to insert those binaries. So if I edit this path variable, you can see that we already have several different folders that are in our path. What this path means is that when I open up a command window and I try to type a command, like if I wanna play Doom, the game Doom, 
or some other thing like Notepad. When I say Notepad, all of a sudden Notepad appeared, okay? And the reason that Notepad appeared is, is because Notepad is in our path, right? If, if I do a directory listing, Notepad.exe is not in this folder. And it's because Notepad.exe itself is inside of the Windows System folder. All right, I believe it's in System32. Uh, nonetheless, we need to put Java in this list. So I'm going to add a new entry, and I'm going to paste our JDK in there. Now, here is a listing of the order in which your paths are searched when you try to launch an executable. So when I type Java, it's still unrecognized because now I haven't clicked OK yet, but even in, when once I do click OK, we'll see, oh my gosh, Java is still not recognized. What's going on? Well, because I've changed my system path, that path change does not take effect until I spawn a new command window. So let me open up a new command window. Now when I type Java, we see that it sees the executable. Not only that, here is Java C. Okay, Java C will let me compile code. All right? So this is good in what has happened. Well, in our path, Java is now down here at the bottom, okay? One of the common problems that you can have on your machine is you could install several different versions of Java. In the version of Java that gets used is the one that is closest towards the top. When you type Java, it will look inside of this folder for Java, then this folder, then this folder, and it will keep searching until it finds a file named java.exe, and then it will execute that. So a common problem that students run into, and even developers, is they get into path problems where they are running an older version of an executable than they think they are, let's say an older compiler, and that compiler then ends up causing the wrong code to get generated. All right? So in this case, I'll move Java up a little bit higher. We'll put it, uh, yeah, right here. Hit OK, hit OK. Now, I can tell which version of Java I'm using by typing Java-version, and it says we are using Java Open JDK 14.0.2, okay? And that is consistent with the folder that I downloaded. Okay, this is good news. So now I have Java installed on my system. This means I can write a very, very simple Hello World Java program. So uh, let's... Let's do that. Let's make let's make a very simple hello world. So here we are, hello.java. This will be our first Java program that we're going to run. So let's uh, open this guy up with a editor. So here's here is a, a very simple hello world. And in Java, I will have to name the class the same name as the file. So I'll say public class hello. And inside here, let's make a very simple method. Um, instead of defining a class, all I really need to do is create a public static void main, which takes an array of strings, and uh, we'll just print out hello world. So I can say system.out.println, and I'll say right here, hello world 093. All right, good. All right, we save this file. And now I should be able to compile this and run this. But this is a, I, I, there's no play button, right? I'm just using a simple text editor. What does that mean? Well, here's where my hello.java is. And so what I'm going to do is open a command window. I'm going to change to that folder where my hello.java is. And I can run my Java compiler. So I'll say Java C on hello.java. And it compiled. If I look, there is now a hello.class right there. So let's run that. I can say Java hello, and instead of saying hello.class, I'll just say Java hello. I run it, and it says hello world 093. All right? So, so far, so good. We've installed Java. We're using the latest version, and we've written a very small program. All that being said, we want to use Visual Studio Code as our IDE. So let's next take a look at that, right? Uh, you can go and download VS Code from 
the internet. You just search for VS Code and you could go straight to the download link and you could do a system installer for Windows or whatever your operating system is. I have already installed Visual Studio Code, but I have not yet installed the plugins. So what does it look like when we want to install those plugins? Well, let me open our Hello program with code. Code will come up. And then right here, there is, because I opened up a Java file, the VS Code already recommends to us, hey, would you like to install the Java extension pack? All right, and, and if I click on that, we get more information. This Java extension pack will install these following extensions right here. Okay, and we want to install this. So I'm gonna click on install. So when I click install, it's gonna go out, download those and install. This will give us a language support like syntax highlighting, auto completion. It'll give us a debugger so we can click run and debug and debug all of those kinds of things. And now that we have um, Java set up right here, we can see, there we go. Okay, we're finished installing all this kind of stuff. We can see now that we have syntax highlighting and not only that, I can click on something like run. And when I click run, it compiles and our output right here is hello world. All right, so our, our IDE is working now. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We downloaded the JDK and we set up our IDE uh, and we have our path set up on our system. Now, what we've done for Java is no different than what you ultimately end up doing with things like Python or C++, right? With Python, you might use something like Conda or PIP or whatever kind of installer you use, but it all boils down to having the correct executables in your path when you need to make those calls, okay? So these are the step-by-step -step instructions for how to set up your machine to deal with uh, Java and setting up your path.